Good morning. morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now I ask Lou and Mary D'Angelo and Anne-Marie Colicchio to light our Advent candle. Thank you very much. My brothers and sisters, to prepare the second, uh, prepare for the celebration of the second Sunday of Advent, let us call to my minds that we are waiting with great expectation to find Christ in new and different ways in our life and share him with others. So let us reflect upon the times that we have failed to do that. Let us ask God to help us to be more faithful in finding him in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. kindergartners through fourth graders for our special liturgy of the word. first reading this morning is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up high, go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. 
Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of, the, of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames, and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way, a voice of one crying out in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, I'd like to do what we call Lexio Divina, with you on the gospel that we have just shared. It's the gospel of Mark, first chapter, the first to the eighth verses. And what Lexio Divina attempts to do is to fill in all of the crags and crannies that the gospel sort of leaves out. And I think you may find it a good way to understand a lot of the scripture that we follow. So when we use the term gospel, we can use it in a number of senses. What it means is the beginning of a particular gospel, in this case, the gospel of Mark. It may also be used to mean the life, the preaching, and the saving ministry of Christ. We know that the Lord was always acting in our midst. And so the word is used only by Christ. You don't see other people using it. Well, it's true that the church refers to the gospels very, very often, and they propose them to us as our rule of life. Or you could use the term as an expanded narrative of the passion and death of our Lord. John the Baptist, who was Christ's cousin, he was in the world to prepare for and to announce the coming of the Messiah. And I think this is something that you have to sort of get a look at. 
First of all, Jesus was living in Nazareth. John the Baptist was probably living with his parents. And when they got the word from Almighty God, John the Baptist went out and he began his work of preaching, baptizing, and announcing. What he did was to announce a new manner of being, a new way of acting. And I think that's something you and I need to really take a good look at. Because for so many years, we have been proposing, particularly around the Easter time, to take on the new way of life. We discover, however, that so many people, once Lent is over, they fall back into their old habits. And they forget whatever good they may have accomplished during Lent. It's a new way of living. It is a way of reminding you and me that we need to have the experience of Christ. We need to have, if you will, a desert experience. During Advent, during Lent, you and I have this opportunity during which we can go and change our life. The purpose of repentance, of course, is to repent to a person. And this person, as we well know, is Jesus himself. What it wants from us is a change of heart. That means it's not just the lips which we need to change. It is the way I am thinking, the way I am doing things. I have to get into my heart. And that's what Almighty God is asking for. He likes to know that there is this change. He likes to remind us that we need a personal transformation. It isn't just our lips that our Lord is interested in. He's interested in going into our heart. God desires this, and it is God who brings it about in your life and in mine. We are called to condemn sin. Sin is not supposed to be in our life. Unfortunately, a lot of times it is in our life. And that's why we have the sacrament of penance. John, of course, is the bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament. John is the bridge between Moses and Christ. Here is John calling the people, attracting the people, preaching to the people, and baptizing them in the baptism of repentance. This is not the sacrament of baptism. And we also read about the locust. And these, of course, are insects that come in. And in the scripture, we speak of them as the instruments of God's judgment. And one of the plagues in Egypt was these locusts were sent to destroy all their trees and to be a real challenge to the Egyptians. We talk about the wild honey. This means peace, plenty, and it also reminds us of God's comfort and also the rewards that he gives to you and to me. So John the Baptist is out there proclaiming Christ. But what he does is he proclaims him as a mere man. And the reason he does this is because the Jews are not yet ready for Christ. As a matter of fact, if you look at the scripture very closely, you will discover that many of the Jews never chose to even become followers of Jesus. After all the work, three years of effort, our blessed Lord had about 120 people who you might say were more or less close to him. 120 people. 
and we need to realize that God has become one of us. He lived in Nazareth for 30 years. And John the Baptist, of course, at the proper moment, came out and began to assume his work. It is he who baptized Jesus in the Jordan. And it is, he, it is Jesus who is approved by his Father. The voice which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then the Holy Spirit came down as a dove and settled upon him. It reminds us where we have an appearance of God. We give it the fancy name of a theophany. It reminds you and me that God needs to be and must be a part of our life. Jesus, of course, is coming, and when he baptizes, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. He's going to encourage a new way of life. And we realize that he's giving us the sacrament of baptism. And this is something that will depend on two things. It will depend on the cross and on the resurrection of our Lord himself. And then now we have the Eucharist. We are celebrating Christ living among us. Yesterday we started it off at the five o'clock mass by making sure that the new people who are interested in joining Holy Cross Church were received into this particular congregation. Father Wheeland will be asking you to affirm all of those people and to be a part of their working. It just goes to show you that you and I cannot save ourselves by ourselves. We need Almighty God. We need other people. We need the spiritual food which this sacrifice and sacrament present. We need to be a part of this mystery. We need to yearn for the coming of Christ. We need to be eager for all the things that the Lord wants us to do and to be. We should realize that we are sanctified by the radiance of Jesus's advent. We need to realize that he enriches us by his blessings and he also comes to our rescue. And finally, what he wants is, he wants you and me to be the agents of joy. Boy, does the world need joy. You look throughout the world, and do you see a lot of joy? Do you see the kind of peace that our Lord says, this is my peace, this is the peace I give to you? Do you see that? Well, that's what our Lord is asking that you and I bring this peace into the world, that we make sure we not only give it, but that we live it each moment, each day of our lives. We may be having troubles, but you can still enjoy the peace of Christ. His father mentioned in his homily last night at the five o'clock mass, the candidates in our RCIA program came forward and asked for the blessing as they began their journey uh, towards the receiving of the sacraments of Eucharist and confirmation at the Easter vigil. And because this is a parish celebration and event, we're going to ask all of you to give your blessing upon them by answering a few questions uh, about the willingness that we have as a community to be that example to them. So Donetta Collins, Mary Ernest, 
Jolie Krishgester, Christy Malaba, and Francine Rotolo, who are seeking commitment of their initiation in the church through the sacraments of, of confirmation and Eucharist. Though they are not present as the church at present to, at this mass, as the Church of Holy Cross, we have a responsibility to respond to their request. And so I ask you, and you answer, we are, we are, and we will. Are you ready to help these people come to know Christ in a deeper way? Yeah. Will you, are you ready to support them in their duties as uh, candidates for the sacraments in their journey of faith? Yeah. We, we are the church. Um, are you ready to help these people share in this Christian community? We are the church, the people of God. It is our faith that we share with those who seek to join us. May that faith be living and true. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our professional faith will be that of supporting them by our example as they go through these next few months and walk the journey that we are walking. Let us turn now to the Lord and let us ask the Lord to hear the petitions that we make and bring to us that spirit to be pilgrims on a journey, finding Christ in new and different ways through this season of Advent. That the Holy Spirit may continue to guide the work of the church and that Christ's message of love may be realized by all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that God may inspire people of goodwill to work tirelessly for peace, and for the protection of those who are serving our country throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will give us the grace, the strength, and the wisdom in this festive season to teach our children his ways, both by our words and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will give us the grace, excuse me, for the RCIA candidates as they are welcomed into our community, that they will know of our love and support as they continue on their formation journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will let his face shine upon the poor, the sick, the lonely, and all those who suffer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may experience the blessings of eternal life, and especially for William J. and Lillian Schmidt, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause now for a moment and make our own private petitions. And for these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask your prayers also for Deacon Ed Giblin's mother who is critically ill in the hospital down in New Jersey and uh, needs our prayers greatly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you sent your Son into the world to be that light. Help us as we light these candles of Advent to find ways of bringing that light of Christ into our lives and into the lives of those around us, so that when we come to Christmas, we celebrate his birth in a new and different way because of what we have found and what we have shared. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second collection today <clears throat> is for capital improvement and debt reduction. Please join in the offertory hymn number 614, O oh God Our Help in Ages Past. 614.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offering. And since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through us, Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled our, his, the design, coming into the world long ago, and opening for us the way to eternal life that when he comes again in glory and majesty, all and all and all is made la made and all is at last made manifest, we watch for that day, may inherit and, and we watch for that day, may inherit the great promise to which we are dare to hold. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we without, as we end, sing the glory without end as we acclaim his gifts. You are holy, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope, Matthew our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Face, have mercy on us all, we pray. That with, that with the Blessed Mary, Mother of God, with the ap Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior commanded, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and thy soul shall be healed.
Are there any ministers of communion who are taking communion to the sick? Please be seated for a moment. Um, as you know, for the bulletin, uh, we have a number of uh, scholarships that we give out to Catholic schools. And uh, now that we have our school open, we give out scholarships to those in Holy Cross School, but also we give out scholarships to those in our parish that go to other Catholic schools. And so today I'm going to give out one, and it's called the Sister Karen Nipper Award, who was principal at our school for many years. And that's going to Sophia Cavacos. <laughs> Sister Karen Nipper served as principal of Holy Cross School from 1979 to 1995. Sister Carolyn had a strong faith in God that was reflected through her ministry at Holy Cross. She was courageous, strong, and a leader. She was detailed, orientated, and loved uh, for things to be in order. Uh, the scholarship has been created with these intentions in mind of carrying on her spirit of leadership that she brought to our school and to others. And we congratulate you and we present this to you. We had another one of these uh, for Sister Carolyn that we gave out at a school mass, and that went to Luke Begaman. So that is one of eight scholarships that we give out uh, here in Holy Cross Parish. We're very thankful to all those who make those scholarships possible. Please stand. by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to just wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Please join us for the annual Holy Cross Advent celebration held today at 1130 in the gym and in Beacon Place. This Thursday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, a holy day of obligation. Our masses will be at 730 a.m., 930 a.m., and 7 p.m., and the Mass of Anticipation is on Wednesday at 530. Next Wednesday, excuse me, <clears throat> next Sunday, there will be an Advent penance service for all ages, sponsored by the Eastern Greece Charlotte Churches, held at 2 p.m. at Holy Name of Jesus Church. The Holy Cross gift shop is offering all merchandise at 30% off, including many Christmas and sacramental items. The shop is open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Cub Scout Pack 222 is holding a holiday bake sale in the Parish Center foyer after all Masses this weekend. 
Thank you to all who have responded to the CMA. If you have not yet done so, we ask that you fill out and return your CMA pledge card as soon as possible. Our giving tree still has many tags available. Please take one and share Christmas with someone in need. And please see our bulletin or website at holycrossrochester.org for these and all parish details. There will be a coffee hour this morning after Mass in Beacon Place in conjunction with our Advent gathering. And our recessional hymn today is number 321 on Jordan's Bank, 321. And we invite all to our Advent celebration and to the coffee hour over in the school. If you want to go down around the back and come in through Beacon Place, that's easier than walking all the steps coming this way. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.